part 10 of Principality on Self-Bitterness and we're continuing with False Piety. And False Piety might drive a wife to continue suffering verbal or physical abuse from her husband. The Bible teaches women to submit to their husbands and abused wives often misunderstand this teaching. And yes, I certainly did. There is another side to it. The Bible also tells men to love their wives as Christ loves the church. An abusive husband commits an evil act and the wife must get away, get out of the way. Yet by allowing the abuse to continue, the wife is saying that she's getting the treatment she deserves. And no, I did not think that. In essence, she is agreeing that the abusive treatment is all she is worth. Since God created her in his own image, this false piety has her saying that God is of little worth. False piety is closely related to codependency. Codependency is really calling evil good. In codependency, we are allowing evil and sinful behavior to continue because we do not love or respect ourselves. We allow uh, ourselves to be physically, emotionally, and sexually abused because we think that is our lot in life. We believe that we deserve to be treated in those ways. In reality, in codependency, we are calling evil good and in doing so, have become accessories to sin. Verbal, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse are sins, and they can also be criminal acts. If we allow these to happen, if we allow ourselves to be doormats, we are then agreeing that we deserve it. In not stopping this kind of behavior, we are not loving or respecting ourselves as God commands us to. When we allow ourselves to be treated this way, it becomes our sin also. We stop the behavior by telling the person to stop. If they refuse, we remove ourselves from the situation. God calls us to peace and to have perfect hatred for evil. So why would we submit to evil? False piety and codependency produce martyrdom and martyrdom can be true or false. When we hear ourselves say, my sufferings allow me to identify with the world's pain, or ungodly people beat and killed the Savior, I should count it a blessing to be beaten by my evil husband. But this is evil thinking. True martyrs suffer for the sake of the cross not to raise their own self-image or to give them an excuse why they should do nothing to correct a bad situation. My experiences have taught me that the two most common occurrences of false piety are found in wives and in pastors. Pastors get clobbered by their flock or their board and then go back for more. Once clobbered again, they retreat into false piety, assert asserting that they are suffering for the Lord. What they're really doing is teaching that inappropriate, non-Christian behavior is acceptable. Pastors need to appeal to their flock based on the authority of the scriptures, allowing their flock to continue in sin becomes their sin. There are many ways that we show a lack of godly self-love. We need to learn to accept our position in Christ and the extreme value of God and the extreme value God places on us and begin a proper love relationship with ourselves. God's truth. 
1 Corinthians 12, 14-31 reads, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is therefore not is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where was the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where was the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where was the body? But now are they many members? Yet but one body. And the eye cannot see on, unto the hand. I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant humor, honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath, hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of, of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Verse 14 says that the body is made up of many members. Take a look around. You'll see it takes many of us to make up the body of Christ. Verse 15 says... If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, then I am not part of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse 16 continues, And if the ears shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse 17 says, If the body, whole body, were an eye, then how could you hear? And if the whole body was an ear, then how could you smell? Read verse 18 again carefully. But now hath God the Father set the members of the body, every one of them. The body of Christ is made up of individual members, you and me, and others. How did God choose where to place each member? As it hath pleased him he willed it it is his choice not ours God has decided on the function of each member if God called me to be an eye then I will see the for the body if he has called me to be an ear then I will hear for the body each part of the body is designed to function together in harmony if you are a hand and another person is the mouth, don't reject yourself because he does all the t talking and you do all the lifting. It is the way God designed the body 
to work together to accomplish his purpose. And I'll be right back with part 11.